Hello and welcome to this presentation of the Limited Deployment Cooperative Airspace Project or LDCAP ADSB Installation Primer. I'm Steve Martin. Okay, you've made the decision. It's time to make the move to ADSB. And even though a recent FAA mandate does not require ADSB until 2020, you're ready to bring this outstanding technology to your aircraft today. Now, the question is, where to start? The fact is, this technology is so new that even seasoned aircraft technicians might ask just that. So with this question in mind, where better to go than right to the source? We've tapped the expertise of some top ADSB installers to get their answers when they encounter the questions we're about to explore with you. Some of the most frequently asked in the installation business. So, let's get started with the number one question on the list. When should I equip for ADSB? When you're required to equip for ADSB depends largely on where you fly. In the US, you must equip with ADSB out by 2020 if you fly in class A, B, C, or E above 10,000 feet MSL. But in other parts of the world, you may be required to equip much sooner. Regardless of regulations, you could equip today to start taking advantage of the many benefits of ADSB. What is ADSB in and what is ADSB out? If you're transmitting ADSB information regarding your aircraft, you're equipped with ADSB out. Aircraft that are equipped with ADSB in will receive that information from ground stations or via air-to-air -air communications between aircraft. The safest configuration is ADSB out and in. With ADSB in, you can receive valuable information regarding other aircraft in your vicinity, along with weather updates. There are a lot of ADSB systems on the market. What's the best way to identify an approved system? In other words, compliant with FAR 91.225 and 91.227. ADSB equipment must meet the requirements specified in TSO-C166B or TSO-C154C and be installed in accordance with AC 20-165A or by another FAA acceptable method. Does the ADSB system require an external air ground input? Some require it from an external source. Some derive air ground mode internally from GPS velocity, an airport database and geometric altitude or GPS velocity and airspeed. The length and width code is required by 14 CFR 91.227 and is only transmitted in the surface position message. Thus, to comply with the rule, the aircraft's ADSB unit must automatically determine its air ground status and transmit the surface position message, which includes the length and width code when on the ground. How does the ADSB transceiver receive altitude information? Altitude information is required and must be supplied by an external source capable of providing digital altitude information to the transceiver, usually RS-232 or ARINC-429. Gray code out from an altitude encoder is not acceptable. Can you install a separate altitude encoder for just the ADSB transceiver? The answer to this question is no. The altitude source must be the same for both the transponder and the ADSB system. How many antennas does an ADSB system require? The ADSB system requires a GPS source antenna, either dedicated or shared and at least one UAT antenna. If the aircraft already has a GPS antenna, that source potentially could be used and then only one additional antenna would be needed. In some setups, a second UAT antenna is installed to enhance ADSB reception. 
one on the upper part of the fuselage and one on the lower part of the fuselage. Does the ADS-B position source have to be the same source used for navigation? No, it is acceptable for a GNSS position source to be embedded in the ADS-B equipment and provide position information to the ADS-B without providing any navigation information to the other onboard systems. Do you have to enter the same codes in the ADS-B control head after you have entered transponder codes? Aircraft equipped with a transponder and ADS-B system should provide the pilot a single point of entry into both systems for the mode 3-A code, IDENT, and emergency status. How do you know if your ADS-B system is working? The installation must have a method to display system operational status to the flight crew, which is consistent with the overall flight deck design philosophy. So, there they are, the 10 most frequently asked questions regarding ADS-B installation, along with answers we hope are of value to you as you prepare to have ADS-B installed on your aircraft. Of course, there could be many more questions on this list, but the bottom line is this. In an instant, ADS-B can provide a multitude of vital information to pilots in flight. The FAA will require this technology to fly in U.S. airspace by 2020 but many pilots from across the country are reaping the benefits right now. I'm Steve Martin, thanks for joining us, and to find out more about how you can get started with ADS-B for your aircraft, just follow the contact information on your screen right now.